And then what happens is that the mother trees are in charge of filling the gaps pretty soon and the forest is able to recuperate. Why taking this into consideration with the broken forest or what we're doing? It's very simple. If we work as a team, we are stronger. That's what the forest has shown us. And our ancestors, they knew that. For some reason, we were ignoring it. But we are having to go back to prove that the theory that our ancestors were saying, it was the truth. Tell people that we're we're walking toward the ferry boat right now. We're going to take it across to Manitoba. It's right there. I can see it. Spiral. Living in a beautiful gift of creation. You're not a human being on your knees looking for a spirit. And then you're going across the street at the church. So, again, going back to normal is that as spirit beings, we move through different levels of consciousness. We don't just stay on this one level on this physical world. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. We're spirit beings. We're connected to all creation all the way around. Right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and on this level of consciousness that we are, a lot of destruction has happened to Mother Earth. You know, uh, we know that we see that all the way around. But yet we, we know inside each other that there's still a healing process that we're connected to it. You know, all, and all over the Earth, you know, even for those, but my son, when he was 12 years old, he goes, Dad, you're into this curating museum stuff. What, are, what is the world going to do when they find the civilizations that are buried beneath the the polar, the polar cap, both north and south. What are they going to do then? You know, to see how advanced the people were. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I'm from Wakwamakong. My my relations are from Dogane. My great gra my grandma saw it. She was from uh, Wakwamakong thing. And uh, they had stories about the little people, you know, and how the little people had their homes uh, at the roots of trees and stuff like this. And, you know, in the water, in caves, under the water and stuff. And most of my days growing up were in a little village called Whitefish Falls, right? Uh, the Adventures of Rainbow Country. <laughs> and I, I remember as a kid, we were allowed to, to, you know, as long as we cut wood for the old people during the day, you know, make sure they had enough wood for the night. We carried water up from the river so they had, they had water, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Then we were allowed to have our little you know, fire at night on the rock so we would set our, our fires in the day you know and so at night when we went to go sleep on those rocks the rock the rocks were warm okay and then we, we'd go canoeing at night and we were going up to the falls and we could hear this laughter all these kids laughing and you know having a great time what the heck we're the only kids in the village who's, who's, who's in the village right so as we got closer to the falls you could hear them jumping off the rocks into the falls you know where we, we swim and stuff mm -hmm. And so when we got there, you know, we didn't dock or anything. We were still in the, on the water, and then everything went silent, you know. And then talk about the hairs, mm. all of your bodies stand up, you know. Mm. So we canoed back and talked to some of the old people, and they said, "Oh, 
Those are the little people. They don't bother you, you don't bother them, you know, just acknowledge them, and, and my, my auntie goes, by the way, you know where you had parked your canoe? I go, yeah. Well, they have a home door to go underneath the rock. There's a cave inside that rock where they live. And that, and that was a rock we slept on. Yeah. I think we're losing them. the sepia palpita and spira the chanson rhythme de wasso and the qua puissant si sang and the qua puissant si sang and mon père caring caressing Breathing close, and then kiss, close, embrace, love. Caring, caressing, breathing closer, and then kiss, close, embrace. L'amour, a ma tese le enseigne. L'amour, a ma tese le enseigne. And my love for you has opened your arm to hold me tight. Love has conquered, portraying how lucky it feels to be alive. I love you. Five, six, seven, and eight. And then the cap, which protects it so that it's the most perfect moisture um, oh, regime wow. below. Yeah, be um, and these, the spores, which are equivalent to a seed, they don't have a coat on them. So if you cut open an apple seed, it has a little brown, shiny coat. Mm -hmm. And then we have, like, you familiar with, like, wheat. It has the germ and the bran, bran. and all. That's right. All mm -hmm. that. Uh, spores don't have that. They're more like sperm. Up. They're more like and a this, very, very... This is not the organism. This is not the full organism. The full organism of a mushroom is actually all beneath and in the mycelia. And this is the fruit. This is the fruit. So in the same way that an apple has many fruits, often that mycelium will produce many. And if we look under, it depends on the type of mushroom we've got. We can often see. And so some of them are look up here. I don't want to say they have intuitive <laughs> randomness to them. Um, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. They also, from an ecological standpoint, many of them are are existing kind of on their own as a structure in the forest. 
but mm. most of them are connected with plants. 90% um, of our plants have my mycorrhizal connections, which means mushroom root connectivity, and 100% of our conifers have that. Um, so all of our conifers have a connection to a, um, to a mushroom, and by that I mean like... Frogs all along there. Oh, yeah. There's doop, doop, doop. So there must be bass or some type of fish. Down M and Franz Dirt Lane Way. Above dappled foliage array. There were tornadoes that have gone through this. It was noticeable. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm just gonna go ahead again and film you. So this is this is what I was talking about. It's from the guy Nick Nabi. Come here. There's some hybrid too. They probably did some cold samples, so they took a core out just to count the grains just to see you know, what the age of the bee is. And I think you can see the Probably down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember on it. Ben has a uh, very large um, resource group, and uh, they have been very active in the last five years with the They've been establishing quite a bit because most of this territory has been seeded. as well which looks kind of like it's full of gold right mm -hmm. but you get chunks like that that have all you know how it has crystals in it mm -hmm. so you have all these weird angles like diamonds cut into this rock it's pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. wow because people didn't want to have Anyway, his best interest down in Town and Town and Town and Town and Town
king fine. Environmentalists who just want to they can buy themselves a bulldozer and that kind of bullshit. Mm -hmm. No. Um, they, they work on figures, facts fact and figures. And we got uh, Tim Gray and Nancy Bailey on board. And that was a really good benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we took Amber Ellis from Earth Roots, which are just environmentalist activists and shit disturbers. Mm -hmm. But there was somebody else at the table on our side of the table. And I like Amber, I don't want to go with her. I just don't agree with what she does. Yeah. Right. Saving the wolves and you know training themselves to bulldozers and once a lot of the company moves uh, machinery in an area, they've already got it. But they are going to cut it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and environmental activists are just a pain in the butt for them. Yeah. So we had to stop it before they got it signed, and we did. Yeah. Right on. We never got it signed. Again, you got to get over to closer and make you guys aren't seeing it. Okay. Right in here was the first fire. That big around. And the tree grew over it. And there's another fire, and you can see where it grew over here, and here, and here, and there. This tree has been through five fires. Both times, <coughs> 100 years apart. Oh, wow. Some of them closer, some of them more. But this tree here, and it ain't very big, is about 500 years old. We think, the best guess, this charcoal <coughs> is 300 years old. And that charcoal, wow. Yeah. I, mean, I noticed all along here, they're all cracked on, yeah. on the side. From the fire. Yeah, yeah on the, this side. The fire came up and they... You've been stood around a campfire and yeah. there's smoke blowing up around you, yeah. you know? Okay. And, and there was smoke <laughs> around you and, and build up on this side here. Yeah. The fire so came from this side and the, the wind breaks around this side is what burnt the tree. Yeah. You can see red pine bark is not very thick. Yeah. Remember the thickness of that white pine back there? It's yeah. like this thick. Yeah. And there's a groove in there, but right in the inside of that groove back there yeah. is where the, the soft green stuff is. But the fire blows right past it. Yeah. And yeah. white pine bark basically has zero resin in it. It doesn't burn. Yeah. It's not what you want to make a campfire out of is the bark of a white pine. It won't burn it. Yeah. <laughs> okay? This stuff here is fire starter. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. And like I say, you can easily see the fires over top of this one. This tree here tells a story of what this forest is all about. That's a, yeah, three species like all of them. This here you can see where a tree fell over, the bottom one. And then the top one fell on it, but there's the top of it, and you can see the, these limbs here are all spiral. So you know that was a fire. a crown fire on that tree. The bottom of that tree, you be surprised. We're going to see it over there. I'll, I'll take you over and show you what it is. But this is way up at the top of the tree. We're up over 100 feet up in the air right here when it was standing. Mm -hmm. All right. Over 100 feet up. Just fell over in that big windstorm that comes through here years ago. The one that made the, the, the tree, that white pine where the bear den should be. Yeah. This is all product of the same windstorm. Mm -hmm. so this, this tree here was on the ground years and years before that. So we cut that much out of it so you could walk through here. We just pushed it off. Into the and look at it go over there. Yeah. It just keeps going. Look at that white pine exploded there, but it came back oh. and it kept going. This is a 
or somewhat, you know, like the size of it is comparable. Oh. And it's a long way to the first one. You know the clear pine you can cut over that tree? Logic is just rolling through that one. <laughs> <laughs>
to these sylvan headlands, sylvan headlands, sylvan headlands. These are the sweet sounds of plant spirits returning. In these quiet forested fingers, crisscrossed by tumbled, foaming, glistening, and ruminating rivers. The blood waters, the blood are water, babble roaring, babble roaring, babble roaring, babble roaring. Before another breath is taken. <laughs> 